Well, the big questions uh, that Christians have always asked is, since we knew the date when Jesus, or the year when Jesus would arrive as the Messiah and be born as a baby in the location of Bethlehem, do we know when he comes again those two things? Do we know when, the year, and do we know uh, where? Well, Jesus made it clear it was for the whole world. So that answers the where. Uh, but um, how long does give God give notice for the last days? In the Jewish system, they had about 60 years notice between when they started preaching and when they uh, when we got to John's time. And uh, in 70 AD, the Jewish system came to an end, the last days of the Jewish system. So in Noah's day, it says here in this life application, it says, um, in verse 3, it says, uh, the Lord says his days will amount, will be 120 years in Genesis 6, 3. And in the commentary there, it says his days will be 120 years, means that God was allowing the people of Noah's day 120 years to change their sinful ways. So he gave them 120 years notice. So he gave the Jew, the Jews in it, Jerusalem about 37 years after he died. Um, now there's a comment here um, I'm going to look at in a moment. Now there's a thing called the Gentile times, the way of calculating how long the Gentiles would rule um, and they're not being a king on God's throne until Jesus starts ruling. And that period would start when the, when the Jews were permitted to come out of Babylon and re-establish the nation. From that point right through to uh, another date, establishes a time period, which we're actually given figures for in the prophet by the prophet Daniel. So here, the only discrepancy is that Experts and archaeologists say, and Wikipedia says, and the Encyclopedia Britannica all say, 586587 BCE is the starting date. Um, so, but that's assuming, but that only allows the Jews 50 years. So, what does it say here? It repeats it. There's about five or six scriptures referred to in the paperwork. But this one here in Jeremiah 29, it says... Uh, this is what the Lord says, verse 10. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you, fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back home. So, 70 years. So if you stick to the 70 years, you have to do what Jehovah's Witnesses did and say that it's 1914. Now you may want to pause this. You can down download this contacts on the paper but their claim is that uh, that expired in 1914 that the world changed from 1914 but let's assume they're wrong that the 20 years need to be added that brings us up to 1934-35 which would be the time when Nazi Germany started ruling we had World War Two, we had nuclear weapons uh, we've had the pandemic and all the other things that are listed by Jesus in Matthew 24. So in Matthew 24, his disciples said, well, when will you return? And he said, look out that nobody misleads you. There would be false Christs, and, and both political saviours and religious saviours. He mentions no more nation against nation or kingdom against food, food shortages, earthquakes. He says these are people not loving one another, betrayers. He mentions here the preaching of the good news. He mentions a great tribulation in verse 21 that would be so bad that no flesh would be saved. And then he says in verse 29, immediately after that, after that tribulation, uh, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heavens. All the tribes will beat themselves. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with his angels. And then it says he collects together those who are his sheep. So that's the end of this. So that is listed on this sheet here, as you can hopefully see. Now on here, I'll hold it here, and I apologise for the smallness of the, some of the print. So 
you need to pause this for a little while. But what this basically establishes is that uh, we must be living in the last days now, whoever you follow with regards to calculating a date. But the events prove, the events prove beyond doubt that we're living in the very last days, that Christ is imminent. And practically everybody agrees with this. It doesn't matter what church you were in, Christian church or even Muslims believe that the day of judgment is imminent because the human race has got to the point where it's going to be ruination. Now the point to make is that Jesus Christ's brothers are on earth, so there's some who are living who are going to join Jesus. They're part of the little flock, the bride class. They're to join him to complete his number um, of government members and priestly members who will administer his kingdom, serving him like a bride. Now, when he brings Armageddon and he judges people and removes the wicked and gets rid of the political nations and abysses Satan, which we will go into in the next video, uh, this government, when it becomes fully operational, it's like the wedding. Jesus gets married and the benefits of this government is it will administrate itself on earth, bringing marvellous blessings, which we'll look into on the next video. So, so just bear in mind, there's Jesus Christ, there's those who join him, his brothers, the bride, that makes up the government, uh, the building of the new Jerusalem, uh, the temple that offers its services to heal humans. And then you've got the sheep, the subjects of the government, the ones who really benefit. Uh, and they're the ones who are putting their votes in now, aren't they? By showing love to Christ's brothers and continuing the preaching of the good news right up to the end. Thank you once again and uh, see you next week.